Good evening, uh, hello, good morning, good afternoon, welcome. Um, this is the third little update. I did promise that once Douglas was back so that we can edit this, I would just show uh, some locos running on this layout to show you some of the operational capability. So we'll do a couple of the obvious things first. Now these are just the old Hornby manual points. Um, you just flick the switch. Um, so here we're just bringing in a little drop off goods and uh, we're using to uncouple, this is just a magnet on a lolly stick. Um, Stephen Rayburn, who's uh, quite well known in the model railway world, writes books and is the editor of Traction Magazine and anybody that's into diesel engines, diesel and electric, you just have to read Traction. Uh, it really is a wonderful publication. And this was his idea. The coupling hooks are metal on most of the older wagons and this just lifts the coupling hooks off nice and easy. So I did promise some diesels. This is my 06, class 06. I've got two, so I did a little bit of testing and this is the smoothest running over the layout. Now what we're doing here, we've dropped the wagons off. So obviously what I want to do is run around my brake van. I'm not going to rush this just um, to make the video quicker because it's important, I think, to show that the locos are running smoothly and slowly. I've had to give the track a good clean. It is old steel track and it will want cleaning a bit more often. There we go. Oh, not sure what's happened there. Oh, I can see that it's something I've discovered. Um, it's all down to the coupling hooks. Be quite careful when you couple things up. There we go. I just did that perfectly earlier in the rehearsal. We rehearsed, you see, that's how professional we are. Are we? So what we're filming now, this is it then picking up the, the goods wagons. A little bit of a dead spot there, I've got to work on. I guess you get that on everything. So I'm going to leave that there and see if I can remember how to do this now. So I've just left off the leaving the brake band there. And what we're going to do now is just pick up our two, two wagons, pull them forward. And really what I'm trying to show here is that there's only one siding on this layout, but there is still quite a bit that we can do operationally. Now see if I can remember how to do this. So I'm just going to cut from there. I'm going to shunt the brake van to the front. I'm going to then shunt the brake van to the other end. I think. A little bit. Yeah, he's just going to knock that out of the way. I'm sure that went on in real life. Oh, change the point. Doug will tell you I'm one of the worst signalmen. My dad always says if he was a signalman, he'd get fired. Now this and I is always say lock. he would never get employed in the first place. This is coupling lock, where what happened there was the hooks didn't go, if you like, right and left. So if there's so one hook from over. one wagon and one hook from the other, normal thing would be if they were to do that. But coupling lock is when they do that and, and they cross over. over and then they Which will be coupling. fine, all right, actually, while you're running straight. But it will stop them from running. No, this isn't right. I did it right. Oh, yes, it is. Yeah, I know what I'm doing now. Oh yeah, yeah, I see. But you get the point that even with just one siding, and I built these layouts with very complicated multi-sidings to make shunting fun. And actually, you don't need more than one siding. Just a siding and run around looping a head shunt. The important thing is this head shunt is long enough to take um, a loco and a wagon. If your head shunt is only long enough for the loco, you're very restricted to what you can do. So there we go, I've done that successfully, and off we go. So what we're going to have running in now is something a little unusual. This is a, um, a diesel era, so obviously it's more realistic if the passenger services are handled by a diesel rail bus or a single car unit. And there's my single car unit. Now that's quite an unusual one. The more observant of you will realise that's the day pole um, diesel rail bus but I've repainted it in rail blue yellow ends grey roof and if I run it forward what I've done is instead of 
I don't know if Douglas can zoom in on that. Instead of what everybody else does, which is go for the four wheel, uh, which these buses originally had, this is a Bobo diesel. Now, by a strange coincidence, if you get hold of a Lima Ho, must be the Ho class 33, the chassis fits the rail bus exactly. And I mean exactly. You just cut off the, don't use the floor, build the body without the floor, cut off the locating marks on both the body and the chassis and push them together. I've cut the couplings off because I don't need them. And there we've got, I'll run it in and out again so you can see. I've just brush painted that. I used the Hornby RC colors because they give, I've got that little dead spot there again, a really nice finish. But I've been planning that rail bus for about a year and I've only just got round to it. They're quite nice little chassis, those Lima ones, with a bit of a clean and a bit of a weight. So there you go, that's something a bit unusual. And that can just run into my station and handle my passenger traffic. So then let's have a little look at steam. So what about steam? Well, here we go. Um, sorry, bad signal again. Now, obviously this layout, um, the 040s run a treat on it. I've tried running some of my 060s and they just don't want to know over the points. Um, the points are back to back and they're not happy with it. Um, but a little layer like this, these 040s are lovely locos. That one cost me 10. I mean, if you think the 06 we had just now cost me 12. That diesel rail bus cost me 15 to make. Um, so these are all cheap items. These coaches, you do pay a little bit of money for these, uh, which is, a, I suppose, fair enough, but they've been around for about 30 years. So obviously what we can do with an ordinary passenger train on steam, we've let the passengers get off. And we're just gonna simply run around our train. I'm having a little few problems with that point. Have to fiddle with that one. And obviously then, obviously then we can just run that back into the station. Once the platform, the passengers are on, we can just run off again. So the passenger coaches are quite simple. But what we can do to complicate it, now this is where a little bit of knowledge of real railways helps. And again, Steve Raybone's book on operating model railways is a really useful one. Because what people, they used to run was things called mixed passenger goods. Um, so that's obviously where you've got a goods and a passenger. And apparently what they used to do is muck the passengers about something chronic because the goods took priority. So we've let our passengers off. Oh, I've done that wrong. We've let our passengers off. We're going to take the passenger van there. We're going to run forward. We're going to take that into our goods yard. It's a busy little branch line, this. And of course, we tend to forget that in their heyday, some of these branch lines were very busy because everything that came into the village had to come in by rail. And then we're obviously going to pull that back into our station. Let the passengers get on. I'm just running it a little bit quicker. And then obviously off again. Yeah, we've got a bit of cut in this one. Sorry if the volume's not very good. Um, as I mentioned in another video, I'm busy concentrating and probably not speaking enough. And the other advantage of these slow speeds is if you have made a mistake with the points, you've got time to spot it. And then we're going to pull that off. Now we'll show you something a little bit more complicated. So this is going to be a mixed passenger and pickup goods. So it's going to bring, it, bring in the passengers. And then we're going to pick up that goods wagon out of the goods yard and take that away. So same as before, we're going to let our passengers off. And what we're going to do here, let's see if I can remember how to do this.
them on my back. What you can do is pick up this one. Well, there's lots of Doug says there's lots of different ways of doing this, and I'm not sure this one's going to work. Yeah, I would have done it a different way. But we're going to run that just into there. Just remember the points in time. And the point I'm trying to make is if you sit and work out everything you want to do, so you could have just dropped that wagon off. I wanted to drop one off and pick one up. Ooh. A little bit of practice needed. And then that's the fun and it's just a short layout. Um, that's not going to work actually. <laughs> it is. No, because I can't get two? I can't fit two in there. <laughs> so yeah, a nice little shunting problem which I got wrong. <laughs> no, I think I hate it. I think what we'll have to do, we'll have to I take this to off. Doug knows everything, he's 13. Yeah I am. We yeah I know to... exactly how to do it. Yeah well you can do it next time. So we're going to shunt that into there. Come back in. But it does show, you know, just with one siding and a run around, you can still have quite a, quite a long operating session and quite a lot of fun if you start mixing. Yeah, we've been going for 15 minutes. Um, I have got a brake van uh, that I'm going to get from Richards, uh, which is a short wheelbase brake van. I foolishly saw it last week and didn't get it and then realised of course that it would be really useful on this because I could then introduce the brake van as part of the consist uh, but we'll have that hopefully for next week I think I might have done it now so that, that signalman who's in his little hut would be a very busy man I've still done that wrong I'm going to have to sort that point. Yeah, we've got trouble with that point. But I don't mind the little things going wrong, it just shows you what you can play with. We're still doing quite well here. Mm, done it already. No, I haven't. Passengers get out, shunt that back into the Passengers passing loop. need to get out. Well, all right, they'll need to get on in a minute. And then we'll run around this one. And then we're just going to, after this, I just want to quickly show the bagnall shunter, which I said I would run. Oh, Sigmund's asleep, busy having a cup of tea. So there we go, now some more passengers can get on. And we can go away. So we've picked one wagon up drops one off and off we go and that's taken what three or four minutes something like that um, so we'll just run the bagnall now this is the uh, the pride of my fleet the 06 is very good um, but the bagnall seems to run over everything really well so we'll just run this one in just see how slow you can run these and this just seems to cope with any of the points and any of the flat spots which the rest seem to pick up this doesn't no lovely looking locos please see my review um, we've had a huge increase in people watching this and subscribing but because I didn't put the link on the last videos Doug will now put on the screen a link to our um, newsletter coming out next week because we've had a bit, of a, bit delay. of a delay but it'll be out next week so if you're a new subscriber please if you're watching this video click on that um, follow that link you email us to that email address and we will then add you to our newsletter 100% free 100% free just some interesting photos and the people's projects we're getting some really good people's projects now so what we'll do with this one actually is just go down there chuck the brake van on so it's going to do a little pick up goods Now the only thing with this bag now they're quite wide and I didn't know that when I built this so I checked all the clearances 
I did build another shunting layout and um, couldn't get them all on. So because we've only got a one wagon head shunt. So if you're building one of these layouts, oh, went the wrong way. What I would say is don't worry about lots of sidings, but make your head shunt as big as you can. This layout doesn't like the longer um, wagons. I haven't got one here now, but you'll know what I mean. The more standard length ones, um, they're just too long uh, to make it work. So I know it's been quite a long video, so I'm just gonna shunt these off. I thought it'd be nice for people to see that such a simple layout. We've still got all this, you know, operating. I've been out here now. I was out, I was out here for a while before Douglas come out. This is why I need a short wheelbase brake van. Because the short wheelbase one is that long. I lose these two half bits at the end. And that will just enable me to get those two. Look at that, see that's just run over those points the wrong way with no trouble at all. Let's just help that one. It's a bit of an old brake van this. Um, and what I would say is if you, what I've slowly done, I spent a while in the week and worked until I found which wagons work and which locos work and they now all just live in a box and I can just take them out and go. Uh, and that's what it's worth doing. I'm sure if you're spending lots of money and buying new stuff, then you don't need to do that. But obviously, uh, we're not. Uh, now with the rail bus, which I showed you earlier, we will do a video at some point on how we made that, because I'm gonna make another one. And we'll just finish with a shot of that. But this bag was just, just fabulous, it just, I can sit all day using that, it'll go over everything, looks great. So we'll just run the Dale rail bus on again, and then we're done. Um, what I will say as well in a minute, the controller I'm using is one of these. Of all things, it's a Mahano, the Slovenian company. And it is, without a doubt, the best controller I've got. It's one of the few ones that will run locos really slowly. Um, it's got a dead spot in there. Um, and they're very much my controller of choice. They've got a simple click action. You don't need to reverse a button. You just move the controller one way and then the other. Those wheels need to clean. Gosh. So basically you bring the controller knob to a stop, turn it a bit more and it clicks, and then that's changed direction. So for a shunting controller, it's great. So as always, thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, and we look forward to seeing your comments and loads more views. Thank you for your time. Hi, thanks for watching the video and for the nice comments. Uh, click on the left for a previous video in this series. Click on the right for another video you might enjoy. And please don't forget to click to subscribe, like, comment, etc. Thanks again.